if a doctor did pressure a patient into getting a particular surgery or taking drugs and did not give all the information, and here's the pros, here's the cons, here's the potential benefits, here's the downsides. If a doctor pressures his patient into a medical treatment, it is unethical, and yeah. a doctor could face you know penalties potentially up to up to and including losing his license and and here we have just this uh, uh yeah join the herd of independent thinkers and this very uh yahoo political get with the program but it's very sad to see the whole medical establishment repudiating the principles of the nuremberg yeah. code uh which was created after the nazis conducted experiments on unwilling yeah. patients and the whole medical establishment when it came to the COVID vaccines has just repudiated that. Adam Sos here for Rebel News. Since the onset of COVID-19, colleges of physicians and medical associations right across this country have been complicit in pressuring doctors to pressure their patients to take COVID-19 vaccinations, whether or not they believed that that was the best medical decision for them. This has fundamentally undermined the relationship between doctor and patient, a relationship that is sacred, a relationship that is built on trust. Now, those doctors who dared resist pressure and guidelines from their medical associations or colleges uh, and, and decided instead to stand for their patients, offer medical exemptions, and, and continue to provide the best care that they believe they could for their patients, they often risked losing their careers, losing everything for daring to take that stand. Well, in a bit of good news, an Alberta doctor who took such a stand has recently secured a significant win in advocating for his rights and in advocating for medical freedom. In a few short moments, I'm going to be joined by John Carpe, president of the Justice Centre for Constitutional Freedoms, for an update on this win. Uh, I, I suppose my first question for you is, who is Dr. Michael Prince? Dr. Michael Prince is an Alberta doctor who came to Canada in 1989. He earned his medical license in Czechoslovakia in 1975 when it was under the communists and then uh, came to Canada and he's been practicing medicine uh, for almost 50 years. Incredible. Now, before we get into some of the details of his story, uh, it, there is a bit of a pattern of folks who are sort of standing up or at least who have endured government wrath coming from former communist countries. Um, do you think that, that that's a factor? Have you heard from uh, your client specifically that that's a factor uh, in his story? I, I've noticed the last three years that a disproportionate number of, of, of people from that used to live under communism mm -hmm they see the similarities with the lockdowns, vaccine passports, pressure, coercion, government propaganda, that, you know, it just feels like, you know, Poland under communism or Russia or, you know, Czechoslovakia under communism. So a lot of, um, uh, you know, it's, it's not like all of the people are from the Eastern Bloc. And there are Eastern Bloc immigrants who are right. completely supportive of lockdowns. But there, there's definitely a trend there, I've noticed. Uh, can we talk a little bit about... Uh, just to give folks a timeline, uh, when the charges were, were uh, sort of uh, levied against him and then when the charges were dropped. So charges were formally brought in early 2023. This would have been after an investigation. So they were already... Uh, so he, he gave uh, vaccine exemptions to patients when the College of Physicians and Surgeons, which prior to 2020 did not interfere in the uh, clinical judgment, professional judgment of doctors did not interfere in the practice of medicine. Right. All they did was upheld ethics. So, for example, if a doctor uh, had sex with his patients, okay, the college would step in and say that's unethical. Right. But they wouldn't tell the doctor what to prescribe, what not to prescribe. Right. Um, but since 2020, since lockdowns, the colleges in Alberta and across Canada have started to crack down on doctors. So it was, I guess, brought to light somehow by somebody that, that he was giving vaccine exemptions, and then there was an investigation, and then the formal charges came in early 2023. There was supposed to have been a hearing in March of 2024, uh, but now in January, uh, the college is, is back down, and, and we're not going ahead with the hearing in March. 
Yeah. Now I'm hearing that would have been like a five day ordeal for this doctor basically making what he thought was the best medical decisions in line with his patients. That's troubling. Let's talk a little bit about the basis for this uh, sort of these allegations of professional misconduct. Um, they're all sort of hinged on these guidelines that were enforced by Alberta Health Services, by the College of Physicians, a number of other parties. Um, they call them guidelines, but they're very sort of forceful effectively you're not allowed to issue exemptions for anything rulings not based on evidence nothing can you talk a little bit about that well we have to remember that it, it, it's not just today in 2024 that we know that the the covid vaccine did not stop the spread of covid right. did not stop transmission did not stop people from getting sick did not stop people from dying um the fact that the covid vaccine did not stop transmissions was known in 2021 when these vaccines were made effectively mandatory. Mm -hmm. Mandatory in the sense that, not, not that you were gonna be pinned down to the ground by six guys in lab coats and forcibly injected, but mandatory in the sense that you became a second class citizen. If you did not get injected, you could not go to a restaurant, you could not participate in sports, uh, your kids couldn't participate in sports, uh, so on and so forth. And so th 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 there's no, evidence and more significantly uh we knew by the fall of 2021 that covid was not this unusually deadly killer like the spanish flu of 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 uh of 1918 in any event uh the so-called guidelines were uh, documents by the um College of Physicians and Surgeons of Alberta, as well as Alberta Health Services, which, of course, can cut off a doctor's contract. Uh, right. They can't take, take away his license to practice, but they can turf him, as they did with uh, Dr. Nagase uh, a few years ago. Right. Uh, and the chief medical officer of health. The whole medical establishment was basically telling individual doctors how to practice medicine. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and the thing there is that, that in a very significant and fundamental way undermines the trust that, that a patient has with their doctor. Uh, and we did see it isn't just Dr. Michael Prince. You mentioned there's, there's a number of doctors who have effectively risked their careers for saying, I'm looking at the medical evidence and the best medical decision I can make is to grant this exemption. We even heard horror stories of people with uh, like severe allergic reactions who were unable to get a medical exemption because they, the doctors, they feared their doctors were going to lose their jobs for, for issuing these exemptions. Um, were doctors ultimately forced into a position where it was risk your career or comply? That's, that's it in a nutshell, in one sentence. It, it was risk your career. Not, not that there's an absolute guarantee that you would lose your license to practice yeah. medicine, but, but certainly... Uh, I, I know of a nurse, actually, who was told by her doctor, when the vaccines were voluntary, her doctor said to her, you, based on your medical conditions, right, this is her doctor, knows yeah. her and her history, whatever, you should not get this particular vaccine. Yeah. Three, six months later, it's mandatory. The very same doctor will not grant her an exemption, even though his professional judgment and medical advice had been. So this is really scary when you've got the politicization yeah. of medicine and you've got this college that is interfering in the doctor-patient relationship in a way that it never did right. prior to 2020. You know, uh, how, f I mean, it's interesting, these guidelines, they come from the College of Physicians um, and from AHS and all that. Don't those same institutions sort of have regulations and rules in place talking about informed and voluntary consent for reception of drugs and medical treatment? Well, yeah, they, they do. I mean, it, it's, uh, if it wasn't, f if it was a context other than the COVID vaccines, yeah. if a doctor did pressure a patient into getting a particular surgery or taking drugs and did not give all the information, and here's the pros, here's the cons, here's the potential benefits, here's the downsides. If a doctor pressures his patient into medical treatment, it is unethical and yeah. a doctor could uh, face, you know, penalties potentially up to, up to and including losing his license. Yeah. And, and here we have just this, uh, uh, yeah, join the herd of independent thinkers mm -hmm. and this very uh, Yahoo political get with the program. But it's very sad to see the whole medical establishment repudiating the principles of the Nuremberg yeah. Code, uh, which was created after the Nazis conducted experiments on yeah. unwilling patients. And the whole medical establishment, when it came to the COVID vaccines, has just mm -hmm. repudiated that.
Well, and it's shocking to see that this, this, the, the many of the colleges right across the country, Alberta Health Services, they had long-standing standards in place, and they threw them away, violated their own guidelines as soon as COVID came in. It's like they threw away everything they knew about medicine. Let's talk talk about Dr. Uh, uh, Michael Prince, though. Uh, the motivations for him, th this mentality I read in part of the release, that he it was a do-no-harm mentality, and that he believed he was quite simply doing his duty as a doctor. What does it mean, and how significant is it to have doctors who, despite all those risks, like Dr. Michael Prince, still say, no, this isn't right, I'm defending my patients? He's a hero. He took a risk. Now, the reason, the, the main reason why the college is backing down in this scenario yeah. is because uh, the Justice Center in 2020 uh, had lawyers commence a court action against lockdowns in a court ruling known as Ingram, yeah. Ingram versus Alberta. And uh, in 2023, the court invalidated all these health measures. So the college now legally is in a position where if they want to go after a doctor in Alberta, uh, by saying that, that the doctor did not follow uh, the health orders, they're not in a situation where these health orders were illegal. They were not valid. Yeah. Now, if those health orders had not been invalidated, we would still go to a hearing. We would call expert witnesses. And I know the college in Ontario in one case backed down uh, this uh, because the, uh, the lawyer acting for the doctor said we're going to call expert witnesses and we're yeah. going to we're going to have public hearing about yeah. whether these vaccines were safe or not effective or not and then the college backed down and withdrew yeah. because they didn't the college in ontario did not want a public hearing with debate yeah. and competing scientific views on the efficacy and safety of the covid vaccines you know a final question for you and this goes we, we spoke about this when we discussed the Ingram ruling some time ago, but so many of these rulings, though clearly a victory for Dr. Michael Prince, who's going to be able to go on with his life unfettered uh, practices, medical practice, continue to take care of his patients. But so many of these victories are bittersweet because they're basically sort of backpedaling on technicalities. There's never an, an admission of guilt. There's never a saying, oh, what we did is wrong or we fundamentally undermine medical trust in this in this country in this province there's always a oh well on a technicality we're going to let this drop um is it sort of bittersweet to not see these these folks sort of actually held accountable and to not see the evidence drawn out in the courts well when i when i look at history the trend seems to be that apologies are forthcoming uh typically they only come decades after you know, you look at the uh, uh, internment of Japanese Canadians during World War II, and they were not just, not only were they forced into these labor camps in the interior, they also had their property confiscated without compensation. They lost yeah. their fishing boats, sold off at no compensation. It took decades before there was a formal recognition. And uh, I fear that, you know, in this situation, it might also take decades before people look back and, and, and look at the... Uh, mandatory vaccination policies as a, a shameful episode in Canadian history. Well, John Carpe, President of the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, I want to thank you so much for your time. And for everyone at home, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. For Rebel News, I'm Adam Sos. If you're interested in more stories featuring folks who stood up, particularly medical professionals who stood up and resisted the efforts to silence them, go to stopmedicalsilencing.com.